Zechis Yivah Mizdaf Kof Vez discusses the halachas of Chalitza. The daf primarily focuses on what type of shoe you can use, but discusses a number of other halachas along the way. So as far as the shoe, we've seen two main types of shoe that are under discussion. One is called a minnow, and one is called a sandal. Minnow was a soft shoe which wrapped around the foot, and it was held on with straps that wrapped it on it tightly. The sandal was a much harder shoe, and it just had laces over the mouth to hold it in place. And uh, it was it was specific to its hardness that made that it have certain halachas. So the Gemara begins by two versions of what Rav Kahana said in the name of Rav. One is brought by Rabbah, one is brought by Rav Yosef, and the Gemara will discuss the difference between them. So they both discuss what happens if Elio and Navi would come and tell us a halacha. So as far as the sandal, so they agree. They both said that if Elio and Navi will come and say that you can't use a sandal, which is again this hard shoe for Chalitza, we would not listen to him because the Minig is clearly the Karso uses a sandal, we cannot change that. However, what would happen if Elio and Avi would come and tell us something about the middle? So here we have different versions, and both uh, we would listen to him, but according to Rabba's version, if Elio... If Elio Hanavi would come and say that we do use a minnow, we would listen to him. Implication being that now we don't use a minnow. When you have Yosef's version, if it would come and say we do not use a minnow, we would listen to him, That which implies that up to now we do use a minnow. So the difference is, do we use a minnow now that Elio Hanavi hasn't come? Do we use a minnow or not for uh, Chalitza? So the Gemara says the difference between them is only about Lechatchila. Do you Lechatchila use it? But the implication is that Bidi Eved... It is a kosher. So, says, if you look at our Mishnah, our Mishnah said that chalitza with a minnow is kshayra. That implies that it's only b'diavid. It seems to go like the opinion that says that it's kosher only b'diavid. So, the says, no, it's not a proof. Our Mishnah meant lechatchili, you're allowed to use it. The only reason it said kosher is because it's soon going to talk about something which is puzzle. It spoke about a sack for chalitza. That's puzzle. So, since it called that puzzle, and it meaning that it's not kosher d'yavid, this is said that it is kosher d'yavid, but really it's kosher even lechatchila. It just uses the term kosher for um, comparisons. Sake. Now the Gemara says is using a minnow or not is actually Machakis Tanayim. And you see that from a Brysa which quotes an incident. The Gemara says, Rabbi Yossi says, I was once walking to the Tzivan and I found an old man. I said to him, Do you know Rabbi Yehudim M. Sayer? He said, Yes, I do. He was on my table many times. He said, Did you ever see him do a Chalitza? He said, Yes, I've seen that. Many times I saw that. So then he asked him, Did he use a minnow or a sandal? So the old man said, What do you mean? Can you do Chalitza with a minnow? You can't do Chalitza with a minnow. So he said, What do you mean? Why are you telling me you can't do chalitza with a minnow? And why did Rabbi Meir say you could do chalitza with a minnow? And it is kosher. And Rabbi Yaakov said that it's even kosher. Even the chadchili you could do chalitza with a minnow according to Rabbi Meir. So you see, the is between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Hudabim Seira, at least as quoted by this old man, could he do chalitza with a minnow or not? So that is a machoikis tanoim. <clears throat> now, what is the reason of the one who says you cannot use a minnow for chalitza lechatchila? So I want to try a couple of different versions. So the one says, first of all, in the minnow you have the straps that go over the top, so it wraps around the outside of the shoe, so maybe you view it as a shoe on top of a shoe. You have the soft shoe itself and the straps that go around it, which is an outer layer, so you have two layers. And the Torah says you should take off me'al. It says, v'cholat me'al raglov. Uh, so that says you should only take off one shoe, not take off two shoes. In the case we have to take off two layers, that's possible. It's not a good chalitza. If that's true, says Yomar, then that would be a psal even b'diavid. It doesn't make sense to be a psal only l'chatchila. So the reason must be midar bonan. There's a gzera that if you use a minnow, m- m- since it's soft, sometimes it'll be ripped, or sometimes you'll have half of it. And therefore, there will be a puzzle, Chalitza. We want you, therefore, to not use a minnow because it can easily be no good. So, Yomar says that um, Rav said that had I not seen Chavivi, Chavivi is my uncle, who was born to Rav Chia, had I not seen Chavivi do Chalitza with a sandal which had straps on it, which had laces on it, I uh, would not have said that you could use that strap, that. Uh, type of sandal, I would have said you have to use a sandal that's used by the Arab merchants, which is stuck on much firmer than that. Now, ours, the one that we use, even though it has laces that hold it on, I still wrap it around with another rope that it should be tight, should be stuck onto the foot well, and the woman, when she does the chalitza, she undoes that strap as well. All right, now the Gemara brings number, uh, a number of other halachos or questions. The Gemara quotes of Yehuda who says that we allowed a Yavama to shuk based on the removal of the shoe from the majority 
of the heel, just taking it off. The majority of the heel completes the chalitza. So where it says you have a kashim rabaisa, which says that if the shoe was already partially under and partially removed before the yavama got involved, so it says if it will, if the straps were untied of a minnow or of a sandal, or if it was pushed off the majority of the foot, that's a chalitza puzzle. So that indicates that if she had been the one to do that, that would be a chalitza klasher. That means that if it's that, that if it's pushed off the majority of the foot, if the yevama pushes it off the majority of the foot, that's a chalitza klasher. But it's only the majority of the foot that's a chalitza klasher, not the majority of the heel. That contradicts the halach of Yehuda, just in the name of Rav, that even if she pushes it off to the majority of the heel, it's klasher. Tomorrow says, no, when that Bryce says majority of the foot, it means majority of the heel, and the foot and heel are, those words are used interchangeably. Heel is referred to as the foot because the weight of the entire leg rests upon the heel. Okay, next halacha is a question that Rav Yanai asked. Uh, it's a proof to something before that. It's a proof to something that Rav Yanai said. Rav Yanai said whether um, he, if anyone else is involved besides for her, whether he unties the shoe and she pushes it off, or whether she unties the shoe and he pushes it off, it's Chalitza Psula. She has to untie the shoe and she has to be the one to push it off. Now, Yana had a Shaila. What exactly is the nature of Chalitza? Is it the removal of the shoe or is it the exposing of the foot? Which one is it? What's an Afkamina? In case we did one and not the other. So if she tore the shoe off but she never actually took it off, or she just shredded it, or if she burned the shoe so that the foot's now exposed. Is that a kasha chalitza or not? So you have the exposing, but you don't have the removal. More says that the teku that will stand. We don't know which of these is the exact intent of chalitza. Now the says another question. of Nechemia asked Rabba, if you have two shoes, one on top of the other, he's wearing one shoe over another shoe. What's the halacha there? Tomorrow says, what exactly happened? If he took off the outer shoe and left the inner shoe on, so obviously not, because you have to take it off. It says, me'al, you have to take it from off the foot. And this is not, not you have to take a shoe off the foot, not take the shoe off another shoe. So that can't be it. So the Gemara says, the shayla is where you somehow tore the inner shoe out of the outer shoe. There was some hole in the outer shoe, and you tore, you pulled off the inner shoe, leaving the outer shoe on. So on the one hand, you pulled off the shoe. On the other hand, you didn't really expose the foot because it's still on the outer. Uh, the outer shoe is still on, covering the foot. But the inner shoe, you did pull it directly off the foot. So what's that halacha over there? So Mar says, is such a thing possible? Could you wear multiple shoes? Mar says, yes. Rabbi Yehuda used to wear five layers of shoes in the market. Some of them, Farshan explained, he suffered from a uh, chill and he needed to keep his feet warm. Oh, the Gemara doesn't seem to answer. Now the Gemara goes on to another halacha. What happens if you have a concern that chalitza happened without intent to be a chalitza? So Mar quotes the case, and Mar says, Rabbi Yehuda said the name of Rav. If Yavama grows up with the brothers of her husband, so they play together, so you, should we be concerned? Maybe a chalitza was performed. So the Gemara says, you don't have to be concerned with that. Rabbi Yehuda said the name of Rav. She's allowed to marry them. You have to do yibum. You don't have to be afraid that somebody did chalitza inadvertently. So the Gemara says that this this implies that the reason is because you didn't see that they did a chalitza. However, had you didn't see that they did a chalitza, you don't have to assume that they did a chalitza. That's what we're saying. You don't have to be afraid that they did a chalitza. However, had they done a chalitza, you would be concerned and you would pass But the problem is, is that you need kavana. We have a price that says that they both have to be mechavin. If either of the two, the man or the woman, are not mechavin, it doesn't count as a kasha chalitza. So um, that how does that uh, fit here? Why would I assume that just because they, you saw that they did a chalitza, that that would be, we would consider that to be a kasha chalitza, shouldn't be, because there's no kavana there. So the Gemara gives two answers. The Gemara's first answer is, so change the text and say that Rav Yudamar Rav said, even in a case where we know they did a chalitza, still it's not a problem because we assume there was no kavana. Second version is that when they have a chalitza without a kavana, we say that it's possible, we're only saying that it's possible to allow her to marry somebody else. It doesn't free her to the shuk. However, it is enough to ask her on her brothers. And Rav Yudamar Rav was saying that if you didn't see that they did any chalitza, you don't have to assume that they did one and ask her on her brothers. However, if you know that they did a chalitza, even with Akamana, you would ask her on the brothers of her husband because of that. Now, the Gemara discusses what material 
the shoe should be made of. So Rav Yehuda says the name of Rav, that the sandal which is sewn together with a layer of flax. Rashi has different versions as to whether it's stitched with flax or there's a flax insert. So you can't use that because the Torah in one of the few in the one of the few places where we see the term shoe is where it says va'analcha tachash and yechesko. I I put shoes on you made of tachash skin. So that seems to apply. It has to be leather. So the Gemara says maybe it has to be tachash specifically. It can't be any other type of leather. The Gemara says no because it says naal. Uses the word naal twice. So that's to include other types of leather. The Gemara says so then maybe it should include even uh, flax shoes. How do you know that it has to be leather at all? The Gemara says then what's the point in saying tachash? So we have to go somewhere between a tachash and anything. So we go to leather, but not necessarily tachash leather. So now the Gemara says a question. Rabbi Elazar, um, Rabbi Elazar asked Rav, "If you have the shoe itself is made out of leather and its laces are made out of woven hair, what is Allah there?" So he said, "Well, it's still called a nalcha tachash. Hair counts as tachash skin. It's part of the skin of the animal." So the Gemara says, "If that's true, so then even if the entire thing was made out of hair, it should be kosher also." Because it's part of the skin of the animal, it's part of the hair which grows on the skin of the animal. The Gemara says no, a uh, shoe made completely out of hair is called a krakat. It's not called a shoe. It doesn't doesn't have a name shoe at all. Now the Gemara says Rav Kahana said to Shmuel, "How do you know that the word chalitza means to take the shoe off? Maybe the word chalitza means to put the shoe on." It says v'cholza now. I may maybe means that she has to put a shoe on his foot. So we're going to have to explore the word chalitza, the word chalatz, in many different contexts and see what it means there. So the Gemara says, it says, that um, implies that you should take the stones out of the wall. That's when you had taras on the wall of the house. You remove the stones with the taras. So the Gemara says, okay, that's what it means in that context, but what about in a different context where it means to be miseries, to encourage and to strengthen something? And therefore it could mean to put the shoe on him. So where do you see that chalatz means that? It says, hey, chalatz me'edchem and asham latzava. You should strengthen from um, from within you people that should go to war. There you're being miseries them, you're energizing them to go to war. Someone says, no, there it also means remove. You're removing them from their house. It says, hey, chalatz me'edchem, remove from their houses and send them to the war. Someone says, okay. It says, yeah, it says in the Pasuk in Yov, yichalitz anim anyov yigo balachatz Aznam. You should be mechalitz the only from his view. You should be mechalitz the poor person from his impoverishment. Again, that seems to mean you should strengthen and encourage him. Or says no, it means to remove him, remove him from his impo- from his, from from his impoverishment, which refers to Dina Shal Gehenim here. Or says okay, I have another one. It says that's the reward for those who fear HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is that they are being mechalet. So Mar says this also means to remove, they're also being removed from Gehenim by this reward. So Mar says, okay, well, we have a different place. It says in the list of brachos in Sefer Yeshaya, it says, and there we know what it means, that it says your bones should be yachalets. And there Rabbi Elazar said, that's a great bracha. And Rav explained, it means that we are being mezares. So we are encouraging here. It certainly means to strengthen. So again, so I have two psukim. In the case of the stones of the house, it means to remove. Here, it means to put on, to strengthen, put in. So when it says to put on the to be to do chalitz of the shoe, how do you know if it means to put the shoe on and take the shoe off? So the Gemara says you're right. It could mean both things, but if you look in context, it obviously means to take the shoe off. Where do you see that? Because if it said to put it on, it should say v'cholzu v'cholzu nalei biragla. You should put the shoe on his foot. It doesn't say that. It says me al ragla from on his sh- foot. That means taking off. Someone says maybe me al here doesn't mean from on. Maybe me al means above. It means to say that you should take it off even if it's on the upper part of his foot because he's missing the lower part of his foot. It's still good. Maybe that's what it means. Me al ragla from the upper part of his sh- foot is also good. Or it says no, because if that's what it meant, then if if like you're saying that it means to put it on, so then maybe it means to say bim, and then it should say bim al ragli. It should put it on the upper part of his foot. It doesn't make sense to say 
Chalta may aragla. We would have to say the bays there. It doesn't say the bays, therefore it's got to be read the way I'm saying it, that you take it off. And that's the only way that the rest of the reading could possibly make any sense. Now the Gemara says, was an apikairis, who said to Rabbi Gamliel, you are a people that a Baruch Hu has done chalitza to you, Hashem threw you away. And just like a Yavam does chalitza to his Yavama. Where do you see that? Quotes the Pasuk in Eshe, it says, B'tanam v'vkar mi'leich l'vakish Hashem. With their sheep and their cows, they went to seek out Hashem, but lo, yimtzo, they won't find him, chalat mehem, because he did chalitza to them. So he said, Rabbi Gamliel answered, Shaita, doesn't say chalat lohem, he did chalitza to them, it says chalat mehem, they got chalitza, he got chalitza from them. And that sounds like the Yavamba got chalitza from her husband. That's backwards chalitza. Chalitza that's done in reverse does not work. Therefore, this is not a problem. You are a complaint over here. All right, now the refers back to the mission where we said that in Anpilia, a sock is possible to use for chalitza. The more it says that seems to imply that a sock does not count as a shoe. Now we have a number of other questions about that. Does a sock count as a shoe or not? So the Gemara says, first of all, we have a support for this. We have a Mishnah discussing the person who was Torim the Lishka. That's somebody who went in to collect coins from the box where people put the Machatzis HaShekel to buy public carbonos. So he couldn't wear a cloak with a hem on it so that he wouldn't be uh, suspected of having hidden some of the coins in the hem. He also couldn't wear socks so that he shouldn't be suspected of having hidden some of the coins in his sock. He definitely couldn't wear a minnow or a sandal because you cannot wear a minnow or a sandal in the Azara because it says you're not supposed to wear shoes there. Ramos Chatzay right. So the most question is, you see that socks aren't banned because of the Israel shoes. Socks are banned because the potential of people thinking that he hid coins in them. That shows that socks does not count as uh, shoes, which fits with our Mishnah, which also said that socks, you can't use socks for chalitza. So the Gemara says we have a problem, and that's in Hechus Yom Kippur. It says that a minnow, a sandal, or an anpilya, all of these cannot be worn to go from house to house or from chair to chair. So you see, you're not allowed to wear socks on Yom Kippur. So if it's not a shoe, why should it be also wearing Yom Kippur? So Gemara first says that the reason you're not supposed to wear socks has nothing to do with having the din of shoes. You're not supposed to wear a sock because you're supposed to be, but you know, you're supposed to be uncomfortable. You're wearing socks, you'll be nice and comfortable, and therefore you can't wear socks. Gemara says, no, 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 no. The halach of inoi only applies to shoes. There's no iser to stam be comfortable in a not shoe sort of way. You see, because Rabbi Baravuna used to wear cloths wrapped around his feet, and those were very comfortable. You can't make up your own discomfort here. If it doesn't count as shoes, then it's not a violation of the inoi of not wearing shoes. So the Gemara says, you have to distinguish them between different types of socks. You have a leather sock and a cloth sock. A cloth sock is not considered a shoe. That is what you can't use for chalitza, and that's what you uh, are allowed to wear in Yom Kippur. And a leather sock that you could use for chalitza, and that you are not allowed to wear in Yom Kippur. And you show you that because you, I'll show you, even within Yom Kippur itself, you have a contradiction. We said on Yom Kippur, Bryce says you should not wear cord de kisin in his house, but he is allowed to wear on peeling inside his house. You see a contradiction in Hilchus and Kippur itself. Are you allowed to wear on peeling or not? The Bryce we said earlier said you're not. This one says you are. Must be different types of socks. Leather socks are considered shoes, and other types of socks are not.